good morning, Hollywood Community Church. Good morning. Thank you for joining us in person. Thank you for joining us online. Um, if you're here, I invite you to stand on your feet. If you're at home, I invite you to stand or uh, however you feel comfortable worshiping. Let's praise the Lord this morning. Here we go. been made new in Christ this morning? Amen. I remember being 16 years old, hearing the message of the gospel, hearing that I was a, a broken sinner in needing of grace and that God freely gave his, his life 
so I could have a new life and a, and a fresh personal relationship with him. I pray that that's uh, your story as well. So let's sing this song together. song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Listen Jesus the name
pray with me this morning? Father, thank you that we can build our life on Jesus Christ. Thank you that he is our firm foundation. And as we put our trust in you, Lord, in the good times and in the difficult times, in times when there's no pandemic and there, and times when there is a pandemic, help us to trust in you, knowing that you are in charge and you are guiding and you are protecting our lives. Mold us and shape us into the followers of Jesus Christ that you would have us to be. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're here today, you can be seated. Welcome to those who are worshiping with us today. I know that there's people in our service today, our physical service, that are worshiping with us for the very first time. We're so glad that you're here with us. If you're worshiping online, welcome. If it's your first time worshiping with us online, we're so glad that you've chosen to worship with us today. You can go to our website, www.ourhcc, and there's a, there's a, a connection card if you'd be kind enough to fill that out, we'd love to have a record of your attendance with us today. If you're here visiting and you, ha- and, and you feel comfortable, I'd love to meet you at the conclusion of the service. We're so glad that you are here. I'd encourage you to be faithful in your giving. Um, you should have received a giving letter from me this last week. I'm just blown away by the faithfulness and generosity of our people during this time. So thank you so much for your faithfulness. And I would remind you that you can give a variety of ways. You can give with an envelope and mail it in. You can give online. You can give through text. And you can give through our app. And it's only through your faithful giving that we're able to carry on and do all the things that we're doing. And we have a lot of exciting things that are, that are on deck that we're going to be telling you about in the next couple of weeks. And so I'm really excited for this fall as we move forward. Hey, so this evening at 5 o'clock, we're going to have an online communion service. So we normally take communion once a month. And we're going to do that online. That is through Zoom only. So you will need to receive a Zoom invite. You say, Brian, how do I get that? Well, if you normally receive an email from me, I've been sending out a weekly email. If you get that weekly email, you will receive that invite immediately following the service. If you sit back and say, hey, Brian, I haven't been getting that weekly email from you, and I would like to or I would like to participate. If you would send an email today to brad, B-R-A-D, at ourhcc.org. Give him your email address. We'll make sure that you're plugged in, and we'll make sure you get an invitation for us tonight. So tonight at 5 o'clock, we're going to take the Lord's Supper together. So you're going to need to have the elements with you there at home. Obviously, we're not going to go to all of your houses and and give the elements to you. So you need to have some some grape juice and and crackers or something along those lines. We do have a few prepackaged ones at the welcome table and back if you're here and you want to go by and get those. But if not, join us online at 5 o'clock and have those ready. We're going to have a great time, just a brief time of worship. We'll take the Lord's Supper together, and then we're going to do something just really cool, just to fellowship together. Take about 45 or 50 minutes, but just a wonderful time for us to meet together as a church family. And once again, if we don't have your info, we'd like to, right? Brad at ourhcc.org, and uh, we'll put you on, and you'll be able to get that info. So speaking of Brad... I believe he is in the baptistry, or he should be in the baptistry, ready to go. Brad, can you hear me? There he is, Pastor Brad, ready to baptize today.
This morning, we want to recognize two very special people. Jose and Yvette Garcia have been a part of our Hollywood Community Church family since 2015. And happily or sadly, depending upon your perspective, they are moving to New Mexico this week. And we wanted to publicly recognize them because they have been such a huge part of our ministry. Let me just give you an example of everything that they have been involved in. So in the past five or six years, Jose has been involved in the food pantry. He's helped to teach in the children's ministry, the youth ministry. He's been a part of the missions team. He's been on our elder board. Uh, he served uh, as a leader for Trail Life, which is a local community, and has also been involved in First Priority, uh, mentoring kids in public schools. Yvette has been actively involved in our women's ministry. As a matter of fact, Kathy shared with me that she has done just about everything in our women's ministry. She has led our women to women mentoring program. She's taught a woman's life group. She also has been involved in first priority. And we could go on and on. I think the greatest thing we could say about them is they have two really big hearts. They love the Lord and they love Hollywood Community Church, and they have been such a blessing to us. I think I would add on top of that that they also have become foster parents to Carlton and yeah. Carnell, mm -hmm. two incredibly sharp young men. So God is just using them in a tremendous way. When I think of them, I think of what Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, where he says, We give thanks to God always for you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, Remembering before our God and Father your work of faith, your labor of love, and your steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. And I think if there are any phrases to kind mm -hmm. of characterize what you guys have done and been for Hollywood Community Church, it's your work of faith, your labor of love, and your steadfastness of hope. So we want you to know how much yeah. we love you and how much of a blessing you have been mm -hmm. to us. And I also wanted to just give you an opportunity if you would want to say something to our church family mm -hmm. about um, the way that HCC mm -hmm. has been a blessing to you, Jose and mm -hmm. uh, Well, it's, it's been kind of an interesting uh, journey because we never thought about coming to HCC. But it just happened that when we got the boys, we were looking for a school. And uh, Lori uh, told us about uh, HCC and uh, Hollywood Christian School. And we came and visited. And we love everything we heard. And we like it was going to be a small closet. So, so at that point, I said, well, I need to check the church <laughs> because we need to see how the church, you know, reacts. And so I came like uh, four weeks or three weeks in a row. And it's kind of how God showed me different mm -hmm. things, confirming without me asking any questions that this is the place that we need to be. Mm -hmm. So we moved from our previous church that were there like 15 years. And we moved to come to here. So it's been a blessing. It's been a, a, like in every journey that you take in life, it's all a something that you get trained, got shows certain things. Mm -hmm. And now we know that what we learn here, being here in the support and all the ministries, how we're going to use that in the church that we're going to go in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. So our plan was always like uh, after the boys are pretty much set and starting to college, then, then we'll move to our new season. That's our new season. So they're all set now. So that's where we're moving. So, so it's been like a blessing. It's just uh, it's, it's awesome to be in a family mm -hmm. that uh, is centered around uh, you know, Christ and, uh, and follow biblical scripture and, uh, and the messages. And, and it's just been awesome, uh, you know, in, in all different ways. And uh, teaching the kids, it was uh, awesome. You know, uh, I always love the kids because they're honest and they would tell you, <laughs> you know, you are ugly or whatever <laughs> with no problem. <laughs> so that's always, always awesome. So, so it, it's uh, all the ministry has been awesome to be part of it and be, uh, you know, part of ACC. And, uh, and that's why. I decided to uh, get baptized. Amen. That was yeah. pretty much my third time yeah. because I always do that with uh, a new a new season. Yeah. And when I feel that uh, the Holy Spirit is asking me, you know, to start a new season, then I became I get baptized here too. Yeah, Turn I remember that first day we met in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. There was like a school intro meeting yes. or something mm -hmm. like that and we met in the parking lot and I introduced myself and you guys introduced yourself had no idea how God was That's going right. to mm -hmm. bond our hearts and our ministries in the future Amen. well Amen. I want you to know that you are leaving huge shoes to fill mm -hmm. and I would challenge our HCC family they have done so much and as God moves them on 
Somebody has to come in and take their place. And so let me challenge you, if you're not involved in any one of these ministries that I listed that they're involved in, we would encourage you to do so. So we have some gifts that we want to give to them. Uh-huh. So you've had uh, uh, you. just some flowers it's for beautiful. you. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> and this nice. is just uh, a plaque that thanks Jose for his three years of serving as an elder. We could give them plaques for every ministry that they've mm-hmm. been in, and we probably would have broke the bank, but, but we just want you to know how much we appreciate Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Welcome. You know, we're going to the tiny house, so we can. Uh, <laughs> we don't have that many walls. There you go. So this, this is perfect. A right on one of those walls. <laughs> yes, so it will be good. Well, would you pray with me? Yes. We want to have a special prayer Amen. blessing Amen. over you. them. So let's pray and, and thank God for the fact that we've been mm-hmm. able to partner together, and let's pray for their future. Let's pray. Amen. Father, thank you so much for the way that you build thank your you church. Lord. Thank you for the way that you bring people to Hollywood Community Church. Mm-hmm. And Lord, Jose and Yvette have been such a blessing us and although we rejoice that you're moving them on to another place to a new season in their life Lord our heart breaks just a little bit because they have meant so much to us personally Lord I know that my life is different because of their influence in my life and I think that only eternity will demonstrate the impact that they've had in our HCC family so we thank you so much for them we pray for your blessings upon them Guide them as they go. Help them to get plugged into another church and help them to be as much of a blessing at this new church as they were to Hollywood Community Church. And we pray that you would raise up people to take their place. Lord, individuals with a big heart for you and a big heart for our community. So God, thank you so much for them. And once again, we ask your richest blessings upon them. And it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, I wish Jose and Yvette could have been here with us today. They are on the road now headed towards New Mexico. So Jose and Yvette, if you're watching today, we want you to know we love you. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, they had some huge shoes to fill. And if you're looking for a place to serve, uh, we have some places where they served and they stepped aside that you can jump in and serve. And we want you to know we love them. And uh, ministry's weird. It's transient how people come. God brings people into your life and then he moves them on. And let's pray that God uses them in New Mexico. But I do want to introduce two new leaders that God is raising up at Hollywood Community Church. They're not new people. They're people that you know, but we want to have a special prayer of dedication for them. So we've already mentioned one just a few minutes ago, a few weeks ago, but I'd like to ask Rome and Jackie Ventura if they would come to the platform. Rome uh, has begun serving as one of our new elders. You can put your hands together and clap for them. Rome, Rome has begun serving as one of our elders. He's serving on our elder board here at Hollywood Community Church, kind of jumping in and taking Jose's spot. And they've been such a blessing. Both of them have served in so many different ways. And Rome is going to be a huge blessing for us. Rome and Jackie served on our deacon team for several years. Most recently, Rome and them have served as the leader of our deacon team. And they're actually stepping down from that ministry to serve in our elder ministry. So we want you guys to know we love you. And we are so excited for you working and jumping into this role. And so now there's a place for somebody else to jump into as the leader of our deacons. And I'm going to ask David and Sonia Bennett if they would come forward as well. So David and Sonia have been serving out on our deacon team for the last year and a half. And uh, they are going to jump in the role of leading our deacons right now, which our deacons are really just the servant arm of our congregation. And uh, we appreciate them so very much. So they're going to jump in that role as well taking that lead. And David and Sonia, we want you to know we love you guys. And this is another couple with a huge heart. You mentioned a ministry, they've probably been involved in it and probably done something. And so uh, they're going to be a huge blessing to our church family. I'd like to ask our elders, if you're in the in the building, would you be kind enough to just come and we'll kind of distance down front, but just kind of uh, stand along the front. And uh, we want to have a special prayer of dedication for uh, these two couples as they begin to serve in these different capacities. And as the guys come, I would encourage you, uh, get involved. So we're challenged. You're going to hear us say three words a lot the next few months. Committed. We want you to have a committed relationship with Jesus Christ. We want you to be connected in every way possible with your faith family and community. We want to make a difference in our community. And we can do that together. So as I lead us in prayer, our elders join in uh, with me today, and I would ask you to join in with us as well. And let's ask God to use these two couples in a great way for his honor and for his glory. Father, thank you for 
the way that you bring just wonderful, godly, talented people into our congregation. And then at times you move them on. Lord, I pray that you'd be with Jose and Yvette. Lord, as they're on the road today, headed to New Mexico, as they begin that new season of life there. Lord, we pray your richest blessings upon them and thank you for loaning them to us for, for five or six years and for the ministry that they had. Now, Lord, we pray and thank you for raising up new leaders. We pray for, for Rome and Jackie. Thank you for the heart that they have had. And God, we just pray that in this new role, you would use them as they lead and shepherd and pray for our church family. Lord God, I just pray for your protection upon them physically and spiritually. Lord, use them in a mighty, mighty way to make a difference, not only in HCC, but in Hollywood as well. And Lord, we also pray for, for David and Sonia. Thank you for their servant's heart. And Lord, thank you for the leadership that they've already been dis- demonstrating And as they step up and now lead our deacon teams, Lord, I pray that you would use them. God, um, use them, Lord, to uh, make a difference in our church family and minister not only once again to our church family, but to our community as well. And so we entrust these two couples to you. And it is in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Hey, let's let them know how much you appreciate them. God bless you guys. Ro and Jackie, thank you. Thank you. David. David's going to read our scripture for us today. Find my Bible here. Strapped to my hip. Our reading today is going to be from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. The first four verses. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. And where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where where I am going. Amen. I invite you to stand for one more song before this morning's message. We introduced this one last week. It's called Over Jordan and Across the Sea.
Lord, Father, as we come before you this morning, we just thank you for that promise that we will be with you on the other side. And Father, my prayer today is that if there's anybody here or, or at home or watching that haven't met you as their Lord and Savior, Father, that today will be their day of salvation, that today will be the day that they can declare that they will be with you on the other side that they will participate in that wedding and that they will have the robes that are white. Father, speak to us through your word. We know that it's impossible to understand your word apart from the Holy Spirit. So, Father, I ask you today that your Holy Spirit will teach us, that the Holy Spirit will allow us to focus on your word. Father, I ask that you will not let my humanness distract from your message. Father, speak to our hearts this morning. We ask you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. All right. How are we doing today? We're doing okay? We're just singing real like, oh, yeah, baby. And then we're like, oh. <laughs> no, it's good to be with you today. I'm, uh, I'm happy to be here. And we're going to be continuing our study through the book of, uh, the, to, through the book of Romans. We're going to be in the last half of chapter 4, so if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to open them to chapter 4. Now, we're going to be taking a little bit of a detour into Genesis as well. We're going to be around Genesis 12 and Genesis 15, but those are easy to find. There's the first book of the Bible, so every now and then I'm going to ask you to move back to Genesis and come back forward to Romans, okay? So just so you know, and, and quick disclaimer, I had a huge allergy attack this morning. So I have a little itch on my throat. So if I talk, cough, it's not COVID-19, okay? It's just this itch that is bothering me right now. But we're going to go forward in faith. Amen? All right, so I'm going to start with a question. You don't have to answer it out loud, but I'm going to start with a question today. And the question is this. How is your faith? You need to think about that for a second. How is your faith? Have you thought about that lately? I've been thinking about that lately. You see, my life has taken some unexpected turns in the last few years. Uh, when Xiaomi and I thought we were going to be empty nesters and things will get easier in our lives, all of a sudden different things, unexpected things started happening, right? Yeah, my kids left, and that way we became empty nesters, but my father moved in. And with him, you know, everything that we have to take care of for him then my aunt passed away, and I'm still dealing with the courts and probate and all this other stuff, you know. On top of that, you know, we discover that there are some serious issues in our house that need to be fixing. Not to put on top of that, the COVID-19, which we all experienced it, right? And last week, we discovered that my wife needs shoulder surgery in her right shoulder. And I won't even talk to you about my car problems. Okay? But I've always been an optimist. I've always been an optimist. I've always been a calm type of guy, a confident person. I have always exhibited what I think is strong faith in times of difficulty. I've always been pretty strong. But lately, lately I've been feeling different. Okay? I had some stomach issues. I've had some heart palpitations. I got this hand that keeps shaking on me. Look at that. And, and, and other symptoms that when you put them all together and you Google them, like I do, it says I have anxiety. I, don't th I think I got anxious when I saw that answer, but anyways. <laughs> but it says I have anxiety. So now, this is something that I'm not familiar with. You know, I've, I've, I don't think I ever suffer from anxiety. I've always been very calm. And uh, I always thought, I guess, um, ignorantly, the anxiety was just a lack of faith. You know, after all, the Bible says be anxious for, oh, wow. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. Okay, three people know it. All right. By the end, we all know it. But the Bible says be anxious for nothing, right? So I always thought, well, anxiety's got to be a lack of faith, and I don't have a lack of faith, so I'm not anxious for nothing. But lately, I've been thinking about this, and I've been questioning my faith. Now, the Bible does tell us in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, to examine yourself. 
It says, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. And it says, test yourself. And the reason I'm talking about faith here today is because lately we've been talking about this justification by faith, right? We've been saying a lot that word, justification by faith. But what is this faith? We all operate on faith. Every single day you operate on faith. When you go 70 miles an hour down I-95, and I know none of you do it, you have faith that your tires are not going to blow up. You don't even think about it. As a matter of fact, this morning when you came in and sat in your chairs, you didn't even think about this chair breaking, right? You acted on faith. You act on faith when you go to your favorite supermarket and you buy, well, Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. You buy the stuff, you eat it, and you don't even think whether you're going to get poison or something. You're just acting on faith, right? But that's what I call daily faith. That's what I call simple faith. But the faith that we have learned about that is necessary for our salvation goes a little bit further than just simple faith. It's, it's, it's transforming faith. It's saving faith. It's what we saw last week that Abraham had. It's a strong faith. Now, I don't know if you know the story of Abraham. I'm going to go there as a review because I want us to focus on the faith of Abraham this morning. What did he think about God? What was his faith like? Let, let's look at this. We're going to be in chapter 12. We're going to start in chapter 12 of Genesis and just review it real quick. It says there in verse 1, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go to your country and to your kindred and your father's house, to the land, or go from, I'm sorry, to the, to the land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Aran. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and all the people that they had acquired in Haran, and they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, to the land of Canaan, Abraham passed through the land to a place of Shechem, to the oak of Murrah. At the time, the Canaanites were living on that land. And then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, "To your offsprings I will give this land." So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Now, how old was Abraham when he was talking to God here? Or when God was talking to him? Seventy-five years old. Okay? Seventy-five years old, and God speaks to him and says, guess what? I know you've been set for your life. You're settled. I'm taking you away. I want you to come. And he doesn't even tell him, I want you to come and go to this place. He says, just come and follow me. I'll tell you where we're going. And Abraham had such faith on God that he did not question God. He just obeyed God. He believed. He had faith in the Word of God, and he acted based on that faith. So at 75 years old, God puts this impossible dream in front of Abraham, and he just believes it. He just packs up his people, and we're going. Now let's fast forward 11 years later. 11 years later. Now he's not 75. How old is he? 80. Six, and the promise has not been fulfilled yet. Now, how many of you have been waiting for a promise from God for 11 years? I don't think many of us wait that long, right? We're like, okay, God doesn't want to give it to me, so I, I'm done. I'm done waiting. I'm done praying about it. Listen to what Abraham did on chapter 15 now, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Fear not, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward shall be great. But Abraham said, and obviously you're going to question it. It's been 11 years. Abraham said, oh, Lord, God, what will you give me for I continue childless? And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, behold, you have given me no offspring, and the member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. 
And he brought him outside and said, look towards heaven and number the stars if you're able to number them. And then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. Abraham's faith was such faith that 11 years later, he believed, he trusted the word of God completely. Notice his faith didn't wane, his faith didn't waver. Okay? It says there he believed him at his word and God counted it to him as righteousness. So I think in the last few weeks, we have learned a couple of things of, about Abraham and about this faith. And one is that Abraham was justified by grace through faith. Abraham was justified by grace through faith. The second thing I think we've learned is that God has always justified sinners by grace through faith. Always. Okay? This is important because we have seen that it's impossible to earn justification before God by works. Okay, and I'm, I'm using the word promises and the word justification here interchangeably. I'll tell you why. Because the promise of God to Abraham was to justify his offspring. That was the promise. I'm going to bless the nations through you. And he is the father of all who have faith in Jesus Christ. And we're going to see that later. Okay? But we have learned so far that in this book that justification by, by works simply doesn't work. We're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all disobeyed God, right? Both Gentiles, even if they didn't have the law, because in the first chapter, God talked about natural revelation. And he said, the, the earth declares the glory of God, right? And he also said, we have a conscience. We know what's right and we know what's wrong. We know what's good and what's evil. And we all decided to disobey Regardless whether you had the law or you didn't have the law. So we have all disobeyed. Well, let's notice a few things from our passage here today in Romans 4, chapter, chapter 4, verse 13 and on. And the first thing is this. The promise of God is not based on the law. The promise of God that God made to Abraham was not based on the law. As a matter of fact, there was no law yet. All right? So read with me in chapter 4, verse 13. It says, For the promises to Abraham and his offspring that he will be heir to, of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Through justification by faith, basically. 14, For it is the adherents, if it is the adherents of the law who are to be heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. So you see, the promise was given to Abraham and to his offspring was not given by the law, but it was given by grace. It is an unconditional promise. Why? Because we are incapable of obeying the law completely. We are not capable of doing it. And if, if, the, law was, if the promise was based on us keeping the law, the promise was voided. It was void because we couldn't keep the law, right? And our faith, our, 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 our faith would be no. In chapter 3 of Romans, we, we were taught that there is no one who seeks God. There's no one capable to follow God by his own effort. Therefore, the promise could not have been based on the law or on works. They'll only show us who we are. You know, it's like, it's like a mirror. When I look in the mirror in the morning... It tells me that I need to comb my hair. But the mirror doesn't comb it for me. Right? The law shows me that I'm a sinner, but it doesn't fix me. It doesn't do anything for me other than to reveal who I am. Therefore, God's intention with Abraham was never that he will earn the promise. It was never that. The promise was completely based on his grace. The promise was completely based on God's grace. Look at verse 16. That is why it depends on faith. In order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed 
to all his offsprings, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the ones who share the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Now notice, notice in this verse is that the only way that the promise could have been guaranteed to all the offsprings was for it to be based solely on the grace of God. It's the only way. We go back to the story in Genesis. Go with me to chapter 15. In the chap chapter 15, it tells us that once God confirmed the promise with Abraham, he told him to do a couple of things. Look in verse 9. He said to him, bring me a heifer, three years old, a female goat, three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he brought him all these. He cut them in half. Now I want you to picture this, okay? He's cutting the animals in half, and he's placing them in front of each other. Okay? He says, cut them in half and laid each half over against the other. So the halves are like this. One half here, one half here, one half here, one half here. But he did not cut the birds in half. Now, if you put, if you cut an animal in half and you put a half here and a half here, what's happening in the middle? Blood is coming out, right? The blood of the animals is just gushing out the middle. I want you to have this picture. Two sets of, three sets of animals, two halves, blood streaming down the middle. See, it was the covenant, the promise was to be sealed by blood. It was a custom for both parties to walk through the blood to seal the contract, to seal the covenant, to seal the promise that they have made to each other. Okay? So if, if we were in, in today's day and I make a deal with Brian, we would put the animals and I will walk through the blood and then he will walk through the blood. Okay, you catch that? Now let's see what happens with Abraham. Verse 12. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abraham. Oh, all of a sudden he's tired. Well, he just cut three animals in half, so. Verse 17, when the sun had gone down and it was dark, behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. Now, did you see what happened? God was the only one who walked through the blood of the animals. You see that? He was, he came down as a smoking fire pot, and he came down as a flaming torch. And he passed between the animals. He passed over the blood. The covenant was made by God, and the covenant was confirmed by God. It didn't depend on Abraham at all. As a matter of fact, God put him to sleep. He didn't even want to think that Abraham will get up and say, well, I had something to do with this. He put him to sleep. He put some anesthesia in that boy. See, the promise had nothing to do with Abraham, what Abraham would do or didn't do. As a matter of fact, Abraham broke the law a few times, if you keep reading his story, okay? But the promise is solely based on the grace of God. And then the promise is only accepted by faith. The promise is only accepted by faith. Look at me in verse 18 of chapter 4 of Romans. In hope, he believed against hope, that he should become the father of many nations, as he had been told. So shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in the faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead, since he was about 100 years old. And when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb, no unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God. Fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. This is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us 
who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. Now let's not read that too fast. Let's look at Abraham's faith for a minute here. Again. 75 years old, Abraham believed God, took his family, left, made an altar to the Lord. 75, he believed that God will make him a great nation. At 86, 11 years later, he believed that God will give him a son. At 99, he believed that God will give him a son through his own body and through the body of his wife who was now 89 and had never had kids. Why? Why will he believe that? I'll tell you why. Because Abraham believed in the God of the impossible. Abraham believed in the God of the impossible. It was impossible to, to start anew at 75. It is impossible to have a kid at 86 and become a great nation. It is even more impossible to have a kid at 89 with a woman that has never given a kid because she's barren. It is impossible. But it says here that Abraham believed in hope. He believed against hope. Check that phrase. In hope, he believed against hope. He believed he had faith even when it made no sense to have faith. He believed that God was able to call into existence the things that do not exist. That is Abraham's God. He believed in the God of the impossible. Abraham understood that God will do the impossible through him who takes him at his word. Let me read that again. Abraham understood that God will do the impossible through him who takes him at his word. Is that you this morning? Abraham put his faith in a God of the impossible. But the second thing is Abraham put his faith in the God who gives life where there is none. He gives life where there is none. Look at what it says, verse 17. God who gives life to the dead, verse 19. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body was as good as dead. Or even he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. His body was as good as dead. Sarah's womb was dead. It had never given life. It was barren. It was dead. But nothing, nothing make Abraham stumble. As a matter of fact, if you go to Hebrews 11 and verse 17 to 19, it tells us that Abraham was willing to kill his son. Remember that? He was willing to kill his son. Why? Because he knew God could bring him back from the dead. That's the kind of God he believed in. Our brothers, my sisters, Abraham didn't stumble in his faith. To the contrary, it says his faith was strengthened. Look at verse 20. No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. See, his faith was not based on the circumstances. His faith was not based on the human capacity. His faith wasn't based on the latest medical advances. His faith was based on God's word. On God's word. Word alone. The word of God is true, it says, and it's everlasting. Matthew 24 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. 1 Corinthians 1.20 says, for all the promises of God find their yes in him. And that is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. So I ask you again. How is your faith? How is your faith? Are we a church that is willing to take God at his word? William Barclay said that daring only becomes possible to a man or a church who take God at his word. 
The daring only becomes possible to a man or a church who take God at his word. The passage concludes with great hope for all of us. The point of the passage, the last part of the passage, is that Abraham's justification by faith is our proof that we're all able to be justified by faith. The fact that Abraham was justified by faith, the fact that God gave him a promise that was solely based on faith is the proof that we can be justified by faith and that we can enjoy the promise of God by faith. Read with me there in verse 23. It says, but the words it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. My brothers, my sister, today, by accepting by faith the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, you can enjoy being justified before God, you can enjoy reconciliation with God, and you can enjoy the promises of God for all eternity. By faith. Let me finish with the words of H.A. Uh, Ironside. I couldn't say it any better than he did. He said this, Abraham believed in the God of resurrection and staggered not at the divine promise through the fulfillment seemed impossible. God delights to do impossibilities. What he promises, he performs. Fully persuaded of this, Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. In the same way, we are called upon to believe on him who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. He who was in infinite grace delivered up to death to make atonement for our offenses and who upon the completion of his work to God's satisfaction was raised again for our justification. His resurrection is proof that God is satisfied. The divine justice has been appeased. The holiness of God has been vindicated. The law has been established. And so the believing sinner is declared justified from all things. Thus is the testimony of chapter 4. How is your faith this morning? Do you believe in the God of the impossible? Do you believe... In the God that calls what it is, what it's not like if it is. Do you have hope? Do you believe in hope against hope? Do you have faith even when it seems impossible? When it doesn't make sense? I challenge you this morning to examine your faith. I've been doing that this week. It's tough. It's tough to look at yourself and be honest with yourself, but I'm going to ask you to take time this week and examine your faith. Don't be fooled by yourself. Let God show you what is there. Be honest with yourself. And let's be a church that is willing to take God at his word. Amen? Let's pray. Lord God, Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace, Father. Thank you that um, it is by grace through faith that we are saved, that we're justified, that we participate in the promise you made to Abraham as his offspring. Father, I ask that if there's anybody here that is suffering from anxiety, or worry, or any other thing, that today, Father, will be this day, the day will be the day that we examine our faith, that we place everything at your feet, knowing that you have promised you will do, knowing that you're faithful, even when we're not. And Father, if someone, either listening or here, have not accepted you as their Lord and say, Father, may today be the day that you open his or her eyes 
and allow them to come into your family by faith in the finished work of Christ on the cross. So, Father, I ask you this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Aren't you glad that God rescued you? 
Man, that's such a great passage of Scripture. Can I encourage you this afternoon, before you take your nap or whatever you're going to do, to read through that passage again? That's such a great passage. There's a verse in there that just spoke to me that it said, He didn't weaken in faith when he considered his own body. So, so, so imagine Abraham hearing God and then looking down at his body and saying, Wait a second, there's no way this can work. There's no way this can work. How often do we do that? Kind of like Peter, when God says, walk on the water, and we step out on the water, and all of a sudden, we begin to look at the situation around us and what happened. The situation kind of grabs and defeats our faith. Abraham didn't do that. And let's not let our situation this week, whatever it is that you're going through, don't let your situation defeat your faith. Your faith can be stronger than that. God is stronger than whatever you're going through. And he can defeat it. Let's be men and women of faith. Let's be a church who takes God at his word. We can pray with you. We'd love to do that. If you're here, we'd love to pray with you. If you're online, man, drop us a note. And uh, we'd love to have the opportunity to pray with you. So l- let me encourage you. Today at 5 o'clock. We're going to be online. You will receive a Zoom invitation. Check your email box. You'll receive a Zoom invitation. We're going to meet together at 5 o'clock. We'll have a brief time of worship. We'll take the Lord's Supper together and then just a little bit of fellowship. Would you join with us? It's all about being connected during this time. And we want to be connected as a church family. If you're watching online, thank you so much for participating with us today. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for the message. Thank you for Jose. Lord, thank you for his transparency. and. Lord, I pray that you would increase all of our faith. Lord, we all have moments of anxiousness. We all have moments of anxiety. Help us to cast those anxious cares on you and to trust you. Now, Lord, as we're dismissed, I pray this week, I pray you'd help us to be committed in our relationship to you. Help us to stay connected with our church family and help us to be the church in our community, to look for opportunities to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Let's go be the church.